Hi, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine, and this is your Singer 319W. She's uh, fresh off the restoration bench and looking good and sewing great. And uh, we're going to, uh, this is the final test, uh, and we're going to go over the basic operation of the machine and uh, how to operate the, uh, the various controls, how to wind the bobbin and thread the machine. So um, we're going to start by winding a bobbin, and um, to do that, put your thread on the spool pin, go into the first thread guide here at the top of the machine, and then down to the tension device for the bobbin. Put your thread into the bobbin. Do a little slide in the side from the inside toward the out. Hold your thread and put several wraps onto the bobbin to hold the thread in place while the bobbin winds. And then put it onto the bobbin winder with the thread coming on over the top. And turn your bobbin winder until the uh, pin of the bobbin winder goes into the little slot on the side of the bobbin. Press your bobbin winder down so the uh, rubber tire contacts the wheel and this little finger here will drop into the bobbin and as the bobbin wind, it's, winds it's going to push that uh, little lever up 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 until when the bobbin's full it'll pop it loose and uh, so you're uh, Bobbin doesn't overfill and spill thread everywhere. Uh, Declutch your machine by turning the chrome knob in the center of the hand wheel a quarter of a turn towards you uh, until it hits a stop. You'll feel that pretty hard to miss. And then your hand wheel can spin without making the rest of the machine cycle. And now we're ready to wind the bobbin. And there's no reason to go fast because if you go fast, you tangle things up like I just did. There we go. There we go. That should be enough for our test. We want to wind the full bobbin. Click the uh, finger up. Take off your bobbin. Tighten the clutch knob, and then your bobbin goes into the bobbin case. When you put your bobbin into the bobbin case, you want the thread to come off the top in this direction, and then it's going to double back into this little slot on the side and up under the leaf spring of the tension. And that's your, this is your whole lower tension here and you adjust it by loosening and tightening this little screw here. But for the most part, you'll probably never have to change it unless you do something out of the ordinary. To install your bobbin case, tip your machine back and slip it onto the pin in the center of your hook and bobbin race here. Make sure that it clicks into place so it's in securely. To thread the machine, put your spool on the spool pin, go into this first thread guide again, directly down between the discs of the tension assembly all the way around until you reach the top and can catch the check spring. Then go under the big thread guide and then from right to left through the take-up lever. Pick up the thread guide on the face plate, one below that also on the face plate. 
and there's a thread guide on the needle clamp itself. And then through the needle, and this one threads from right to left. Oh wait, no it doesn't. This one threads from front to back. Uh, turn your hand wheel one full turn towards you and the needle will take the thread down where the hook will pick it up and wrap it around the bobbin and bring up the lower thread. With the uh, thread between the toes of the presser foot and towards the back of the machine and you're ready to sew. So all of these things are not as complex as they look. This lever at the top is your uh, your needle home position. You can choose to have your needle uh, home position be in the center, to the right, I mean to the left, or to the right. And, um, Uh, left position, center position, right position. Uh, so that's this lever. This lever here is your stitch width. That's the width of your zigzag. So with this lever, you adjust your zigzag from zero to five. Um, these these little screws just kind of lock it in place. Um, you should read up on that in your user manual, which, of course, is included. This is your stitch length. And going from the, the zero position in the center, where the... Uh, feed dogs don't move the fabric at all. Uh, the further you get from the center, either down or up, the longer your stitches get. If you go down from the center position, your stitches get longer and longer and longer in the uh, forward direction. And if you go up, your stitches get longer and longer in reverse. So we're going to go set it at about 12 stitches per inch. That's a good uh, average for uh, regular fabric. You set the, you, uh, tighten this down when you have your stitch length chosen. And then when you go into reverse, uh, your stitches will be the same 12 stitches per inch in reverse. This is. Um, your stitch pattern cam for fancy stitches and these up here are stitch pattern levers. The mark right on each lever what it does um, and uh, to add the uh, pattern cam into the mix you raise this lever and then as the uh, cam turns it moves, it moves this lever up and down, and that's what moves your needle back and forth to create the uh, stitch pattern. So, all right, that's a lot of verbiage. We'll get back to all of that. So right now we're in uh, straight stitch, 12 stitches per inch. Um, Or the uh, presser foot on your fabric using the lever in the back here. And uh, it's a good idea to hold your threads for the first couple of stitches. Not always necessary, but it's a good habit. You can go slow and steady and careful, or you can go much faster.
may or may not be able to see that, but it's a nice even stitch. Um, if you have your stitches a little bit longer, you just move your lever down it a little bit, and then your stitches are longer. If you uh, if you want a zigzag. Move this lever, and the closer you get to five, the wider your stitch is. Zero is straight stitch, one is a little tiny stitch, and then you get wider and wider and wider until you get up to five, which is your widest stitch width. Oh, and you have to flip up the zigzag lever. This is your adjuster for the pressure of your presser foot on the fabric. So I'm going to add a little bit more pressure. Looking zigzag, even on the front and the back. To uh, do a fancy stitch, just put your zigzag lever back down and choose a different one. Let's do the ball stitch. We're going to shorten up the stitch length for that. Go down to oh, maybe 25 stitches per inch. Right up. I'll shorten it even a little bit more. Oops, got to, fabric's got to keep moving there while you're making stitches. Or it uh, kind of balls up on the bottom. And then uh, the fabric can't move. You may be able to tell there's party going on at Leisureland tonight. And I'm taking a little break from the party to come out and uh, make a video for you. Got a whole bunch of youngsters here. Well, youngsters being young 20-somethings, uh, which is pretty fun. A lot of good energy. But, That's the ball stitch there. Uh, the next one is a chevron. <coughs> We've got a, a scallop and a, uh, I'm not sure what you call the multi stitch zigzag. Uh, but it's there. And you can use these stitches in combination with the stitch pattern cam that you choose to use. And uh, you'll have to experiment with that to see what kind of results you get. But to change this cam, just take that cap off, slide your cam off, easy as pie. And then you have a full set of stitch pattern cams. This one was a scallop stitch. This one, I have no idea what it's called, but we can put it on there. There's a keeper pin on here and there's a slot in the side of the disc. Be pretty obvious. The uh, keeper pin goes into the slot, and then the cap goes back on. And then when you raise 
this lever, the blank lever, you'll see this uh, finger turn with the follower. We're just going to follow the uh, indentations on the uh, cam, and that's what's going to make the needle move to make that pattern. So let's try that. See everything moving here as the uh, follower follows the uh, landscape of that cam. probably see that kind of a step pattern and now we're going to combine it with something random I have no idea what's going to happen when I do this I'm going to raise the uh, I'm raise the chevron lever let's see how that changes that stitch pattern in conjunction with this pattern Yeah, you're going to have fun with this, trying out all the different possible combinations. You know, six, six stitch pattern cams here to work with. And you have a full um, accessory set. It's got a, uh, two different plates. It's got a straight stitch plate and, um, you know, I don't remember what the other plate is for. But you've got a variety of presser feet, and you've got a looks like a ruffler there, and a uh, multi-slotted binder, uh, edge stitcher. Uh, I don't know what that one does. Um, zipper foot, just lots of stuff in here. So. <clears throat> I think that's about everything. Party's swinging in there. I should probably get back to it. <clears throat> but um, let's put everything back where it was, and we're going to be in the needle center position. I'm going to go back to straight stitch. Uh, I'm going to set the stitch length at about 12 stitches per inch. And you have the uh, you have the online manual that I sent you, and uh, you'll have your uh, paper copy here too. So uh, read it. You know it's it's not a long read. It's real. Uh, it's an easy read. Sit down with a cup of coffee and read it through, and it will greatly enhance your sewing experience. And you'll feel a lot more confident with this machine if you. Uh, to take the time to read the manual you can skip you know how to do all the fancy stitches and stuff but but read the uh the basics of you know machine operation uh oiling you're going to want to oil your machine uh, if you use it all day every day oil it every couple of days if you use it um 
you know, a couple times a week for several hours. Uh, probably oil it once a month. If you uh, bring it out on rare occasions for, a, you know, to patch your pants or to do some special thing, and it hasn't been oiled in three months, uh, go through and oil it because the oil will evaporate. And you want you want the uh, parts to be able to slip and slide on a uh, nice clean film of oil. Oh boy, live fiddle music. Um, okay, I'm gonna. I know that this is a sewing machine video, but we're gonna go see Rosa play. She's a professional. So you're at Leisure Land. And this, uh, there's a family going, family gathering going on for, uh, one of my landmates. And, uh, this is her mom. Uh, her mom's, uh, oh, and her daughter. Okay. This is my landmate's sister. Anyway, party. So, anyway, uh, if you've come here from somewhere else on the internet, we are Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine, and um, we're on Stagecoach Road out in the Coast Range of Oregon, so we are StagecoachRoadSewing.com, and uh, if you come out to our website, you're going to see, uh, we've got pictures of hundreds and hundreds hundreds of machines that we've restored over the last uh, 25 years or so. Um, hundreds and hundreds, you'll be amazed. And we have pictures from all different angles and uh, probably a little bit of information about the machine. Um, okay. Anyway, stagecoachroadsewing.com, and we'll see you there.